AI agents are transforming how we work, automating tasks, analyzing data, and can even act as a reliable personal assistant. My prediction is that 2025 is going to be the year of agentic AI agents will begin really popping up everywhere. And Phi Data is one of the agent frameworks that is getting tons of attention and popularity. In this tutorial, I will go through how to get started with Phi Data Agent Framework in Python and some of the differences between Phi Data and Pydantic AI. Now let's look at the difference between Phi Data and Pydantic AI. While both frameworks support both closed and open models, they differ significantly in several key aspects. Pydantic AI emphasizes heavily enforced type safety which is a core feature inherited from its pedantic foundation. In contrast, Phi Data takes a more flexible approach with less strict type enforcement. One notable advantage of pedantic AI is this type-safe dependency injection system, which makes testing and iterative development more streamlined. However, Phi Data stands out with its dedicated user interface, which pedantic AI currently lacks. When it comes to maturity, Phi Data has a clear advantage. Having been in development for almost three years and maintaining a stable code base, Pydantic AI, while still in its early beta stage, shows promise and is likely to gain significant traction due to its association with Pydantic. This potential is reflected in its impressive 5.5 thousand GitHub stars, though Phi Data leads with 18 thousand stars. Feature-wise, Phi Data offers a more comprehensive package, supporting multimodal interactions and providing numerous capabilities. Pydantic AI at this stage has a more limited feature set and only supports text input. However, given its strong foundation and backing, we can expect to see more features added as the framework matures. In summary, if you are looking for an agent framework that is easy to use, has a beautiful UI and comes with all features ready, go with Phi Data. If you need a dependency ingestion system, type safety, structured responses, graph support, and prefer to implement all the features yourself, then go with Pydantic AI. Both agent frameworks are reliable and are here to stay. Now to get started, launch your terminal and run the command pip install Phi Data. I will be sharing three examples in this tutorial to cover three key use cases. Let's start with a very basic example, a web search agent powered by DuckDuckGo to browse the web. Depending on the model providers and tools you're using, you may need to install the third-party libraries separately. And here are all the tools available. Some of the key ones are DuckDB, GitHub, Google Search, Slack, SQL, and YouTube. I will cover those tools in separate videos. You can also create your own tool, but I found the setup is a lot more complicated and not as intuitive as Pydantic AI. Back to the script. Go ahead, import the Python packages. Next, create the web search agent with the agent class. If we hover our mouse to the agent class, we can see that the agent is equipped with a whole bunch of parameters to control its behavior and settings. I will cover how to use those settings in a separate video. In the agent creation, give the agent a name, assign a model, system prompt, and tools. Use show tool calls and markdown to show if you want the output to display when tools are being used and whether output should be formatted as markdown output. To send a request, call the run method with your prompt. You can also use the print response method to display the output directly, which is a convenient way to quickly test and display an agent's response in the terminal. However, the print response method will return nothing from the call. Just keep that in mind. For the second example, I will share how to incorporate multimodal features in an agent run. 
Surprisingly, my data multimodal feature is extremely easy to use. Let's set up the web search agent first. There are three ways you can include a file in a request call. The first method is provide the file path directly. The second method is convert an image as a binary. This approach is useful when you don't have access to a physical machine or you're working with files hosted on the cloud. The third method is to provide the source URL directly. In this example, I am going to provide two separate images with different source format. The last example I want to share is how to set up multi-agent orchestration, which is a handy feature to group agents together to work side by side. For the example, I want to create two agents. One agent to search the web for information. The other agent will be responsible to scrape data from websites. And for that, we need to install beautiful soup Python library. Next, set up the agents. From Fi Data Tools website library, we can use website tools to parse a website. To group agents together as a single unit, set up another agent, but this time using the team parameter. We can combine the agents to form a team to tackle tasks together. You would use the team agent just as you would normally use regular agents. If we examine the output, two function calls are executed. The first call is done by the web search agent to search number one selling vehicle in the US. The second call by the web scraping agent to pass the hyperlinks. Unfortunately, Looks like request call from the web search agent is blocked by the website. Anyway, let's continue. This example is optional, but if you want to use Fi Data's UI to interact with your agents, create an account on Fi Data's website. On your terminal, install Fast API Standard and Python Docx Python libraries. From Fi Playground, import Playground and serve Playground app. To launch the UI, create a Playground instance with the agents and launch the app with serve Playground app. If we look at top right corner, we can connect to several endpoints basically different sessions. Agent dropdown shows the available agents. Underneath is the model assigned to the agent. Now let's ask, what are some today's important news? If we look at the URL, the UI is actually hosted on FiData's website. We are just feeding the data to the UI. I actually really like those approaches. For one, it saves me a lot of hassle not needing to maintain the UI, which lets me focus solely on the agents and tools development. Second, I still hold the control which agents and data will be used. There are other features like regs and reasoning and use cases I want to cover. But for now, this is everything for this video. Just enough stuff to get you started with FiData. If you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.